But after that, my daughter thought I was losing my mind. And uh, at that time, I took all my wife's stuff out of the house, put it in the cellar. Had a bedroom set up like for a single guy, you know. But that day, I walked downstairs and pulled all her stuff up, set the room back up like she was there. And my daughter really thought I was losing my mind. And I told her I was a Christian. And she said, I'm not going to church. I said, you don't have to go to church. Mm. I said, but I'm going to church. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and she goes, you know, she's not coming back. She doesn't, she doesn't love you anymore. She this is Tina. Me. Yeah, she yeah. had talked to my daughter on the phone. And this is my daughter from my first marriage, but she was like her mom. And she just told her, she goes, I don't want to be with your dad anymore. I just want you to know that. I, I, she goes, I got a weight lifted off me like I've never had before. And I told my daughter, I don't care what she said. You know what I mean? I'm just going to keep going to church. And sure enough, um, there's this girl that both of us knew who had called me and was telling me about my wife going to the Spanish church and all that stuff, Rebecca. And um, she invited me to a party at her house, which was on a Saturday. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Yeah, I think it was a Saturday. And I said, is my wife going to be there? And she goes, yeah. And I said, she ain't going to want to be there. And she goes, I already talked to her. She said, she doesn't care that you're there. I was like, okay. So I went and, you know, I was mingling with people. And my wife came in. I was just like, wow, first time seeing her. It's like I saw her for the first time. Wow. You know, and it was. It That's was, so cool. It was weird. And she even told me, she said, when she saw me, she looked at my eyes and she said she saw something completely different. Clean. It wasn't me. You're, yeah, yeah, you're saved. You're sober. Yeah. And um, I had told her, I, cool. I, yeah, I told her, I said, uh, I go, how you doing? She goes, fine. And she goes, so I heard you went to church or something. And I said, yeah. And she goes, yeah, I'm going to that church uh, tonight. Yeah, it was Saturday. So she went to the Saturday night service. And I go, oh. I go, she goes, yeah, I heard him on the radio. I thought he was pretty cool. That's the way. It, I thought it was totally different. My wife kind of straightened the story out for me. So she went that Saturday night. We spent the day together. You know, and neither one of us, we were all sucked up. We were like thin because we weren't eating because we were depressed. And uh, we ate really good that day because we saw each other. And um, she went to church that night. Pastor Shealy was talking about me, how he came in. He didn't say my name. He just said this guy came in. So she called me that night about 10 o'clock at night and she said, hey, you want to go to church in the morning? And I go, sure. And I go, where do you live? <laughs> I'll pick you up. So she gave me her address. We kind of redated. Went to, you know, went to church together. Then I went to her church. We're kind of going back and forth, and God, uh, God got us to to stay at that church, and um, <clears throat> it was just amazing. God brought us back together within a few weeks, and uh, it was amazing the way it happened. Because uh, I remember my pastor said, "I said he goes, you need to pray for your wife." I said I had this weird controlling thing still going on, like yeah. I felt like I had to make moves for her, otherwise she's gonna make a wrong move. She was like a kid to me, yeah. and uh, he said, "Just pray that God would protect her. That's all I want you to do. Don't be greedy." And it was kind of funny because I think two nights later, I went home one night and uh, my daughter was there and my wife lived with this family with these kids. And she called me and said, can, can, your, can your daughter stay with us for overnight? I want her to hang out with me and these kids. And I go, yeah, okay, no problem, you know. And I, you know, my daughter was like my crutch, you know. When I had her there, I wasn't so lonely. I wasn't so, we, I, I played Chinese checkers with her. She, she will not play that game anymore, I guarantee you that. Um, <laughs> That's funny. So she went that night. I dropped her off, and uh, and all of a sudden I see my wife. My wife's going like this, and I'm like, "What's up?" She goes, "Oh, you know, it's getting kind of late. Maybe you should go home." And I'm like, "Oh, okay. I guess she doesn't want me here." So I left, and I went home that night. And I still remember uh, I went home, took a shower, threw my sweats on, a t-shirt, and I said, "Maybe I should read my Bible," you know. So I tried to read the Bible. I couldn't read, and it was just it's just it kind of hurt me because I thought she would want to see me, you know. And then I remember when my pastor said, "Don't pray and be greedy." But I got greedy that night. I, I got on my knees that night. I just dropped everything and said, Lord, I love her. There it goes. <laughs> Every time I talk about this part. <laughs> and I said, uh, I won't hurt her anymore. And I said, you know, I, you've changed my life. You've changed her life. And I want her back. I'm going to be greedy tonight. I want my wife back. And uh, I went to bed that night, turned all the lights off. And then all of a sudden... Uh, you know, you just start dozing off, and you feel yourself going to sleep, kind of. And then all of a sudden, I heard a light switch click right outside my bedroom. And we had one of those hard, those little light switches, you click, click, you know. And I, I thought somebody was in my house. I turned over, and it was her standing in my doorway. And I was like, I have supersonic hearing. She'll tell you that. We have a, a loud screen door if you open it. I had changed all the locks on my door, except for one. That was the only one I did not lock. I and mean, that was the only one that I locked that night. All the rest of them I did not lock. So she got in the house with that key, opening the door knob. Wow. And she was praying outside, she said, that I wouldn't hear a thing. She got in. She changed. Uh, she showed up in my doorway. It looked like an angel. I'll never forget it. 
And uh, yeah, we spent the night together and the next morning she says, I'm not, I want to stay home. And we've been together ever since. Dude, that's, yeah. wow. <laughs> I tell people all the time, if you think there's no miracles, my <clears throat> wife was in San Francisco going to church. I'm in San Bruno. Yeah. God brought her and healed us. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Wow, you just got me on that one. <laughs> gets me every time we just had our 22nd year anniversary so. i've done a couple of these podcasts so far and that's 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 the first time i've gotten and i always try not... i always tell married couples if you think that your marriage cannot work yeah must be a sandstorm in here <laughs> <laughs> Go right across i'm my glad eyes. i'm not the only Go one right across my eyes two crazy guys i were sitting here weeping <laughs> <laughs> we're such tough guys <laughs> i give Ugh. 